Hey, all you people, what's going on? It just started to rain, so I'm gonna make this quick and then cut to a day where it wasn't raining. Sorry, it's been a little while. Um, I've been working hard on the set of Car Trek season seven and eight, and then I got a really cool opportunity to tell a Vin Wiki story at Ed Bolian's studio. Um, I will link to that in the description below, so definitely check that out, support his channel, and support my story. We're trying to sell this right now uh, because the frame is disintegrating in front of our eyes. Okay, so most people who have been researching 4th Gen Total 4Runners know about their rust issues. And for the most part, they plague all Toyotas from this generation that utilize a ladder frame. I'm talking Sequoias, Tacomas, Tundras, 4Runners, and sometimes Land Cruisers. Now, when we were researching 4Runners and initially went to the dealer to get one of these, um, there was surface rust, but there really wasn't any rot that I could tell. Well. Fast forward about a year later and I'm doing everything I can to help keep the frame from disintegrating. I tried evapor rust, I tried grinding down the excess rust off of the frame, and then painting it with chassis saver, but everything I did was just too little, too late. And then the tranny lines started leaking, and then the power steering lines started leaking. Everything was just adding up and becoming a little too overwhelming. So this brings us to now. Trying to find an affordable replacement for the 4Runner and sell it while we still can. Who's that? Wow. Hello all, Sam just bought the car and this is also our first time looking in the back seat or the trunk. <laughs> that looks really sick. Hey Samantha. Hello. How you thinking so far? Terry is really nice. He's very beautiful. I like how he drives. It's like comfortable as in like it's familiar to drive, I think, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. The seats are not that comfortable. Um, they feel a lot like a Jeep Wrangler. And the way it rides too is a lot like a Jeep Wrangler. All right, we are back home. Samantha, what you doing? I am cleaning up the dirt in between all of the buttons and it's disgusting. Sorry, that's probably from my fingers. But overall, we got a pretty good deal on this thing. It's a 2014, 169,000 miles, and we got it for $9,500 uh, because it needs a couple things. And that's right now in this market, that's a great deal. Um, it's about $1,400 below market average. So we're doing pretty good. And getting it down south does make a big difference when it comes to frame rust. So what do we got to do right now? We got new wiper blades. Uh, I just carpet cleaned all the seats. Yes, which also had poop stains on them. So yeah, there were definitely thank you. definitely poop stains or well, some sort of brown, mysterious stain. Yeah. So let's let's give you a little tour of this Nissan Xterra. Overall, I have a lot to learn about these cars, but I'm excited to take the journey. We've got it up on jack stands right now, a little precariously, but they're safe. And I'm going to grease up the U joints on the drive shaft, and I'm going to change out the uh, differential fluids to make sure that they're good. It is singing a little bit on the highway and I can't tell if it's the tires or if it's the differential or if it's wheel bearings. So I'm gonna start narrowing down those potential things. Bobby! How did it go? All right. What do, you, what do you think about the Xterra? The Xterra? It sounds like a dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> the design is old enough, so this thing is pretty much a dinosaur. One of the reasons Nissan discontinued these in 2015 is because they weren't selling enough. And I think I know the reason why, is because the architecture of this is just so antiquated. They designed this in 2004 for the 2005 model year and just didn't update it pretty much throughout the entire run of it. So when comparing a 2014 Xterra to say a 2014 Forerunner, there's just a massive amount of difference when these in reality compare better to a third gen 4Runner from 2002. Unless you consider the technology, which is a slight upgrade. Another thing to note is that this is not the Pro 4X, which has a locking rear differential, um, but we do have four high, four low, and, and the ability to turn the traction control off, which is handy when you're off-roading. And it all engages very quickly and smoothly. Being from North Carolina, the rust is not bad under here, especially when compared to the 4Runner. 
there are a few spots. Uh, I know that a common place to rust out is this rear bumper, but it looks like it'd be pretty easy to replace if it ever got too bad. We are running on leaf springs back here. Um, solid axle. It does ride pretty bouncy. Um, like I said before, it rides a lot like the Jeep Wrangler we had rented. And there is a little bit of clunking. Uh, I need to figure out what that's from. It's probably a sway bar bushing. A little bit of rust, no rot though. I definitely made sure of that this time. We have a new fan clutch coming in tomorrow and I'll work on installing that because that's definitely the most blatant thing that pops out to me is the sound of the, the fan. It's, it's a racket and it's probably siphoning some power out of the, the four liter here. And gas mileage and, and we want to conserve all the gas mileage we can. What's a couple features that you like about this, especially as compared to the 4Runner? Um, I really like how there's a display here. I've never had a car that had a display of any sort. It only like comes on when I have music playing and stuff, but yeah, it doesn't have like navigation or anything, but I do navigation on my phone anyways, so it doesn't really matter to me, but Yeah, anyone cool. who uses navigation on a car's navigation is a psychopath, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's the little things, you know? I really like the compartment on the roof. That's really cool. I don't know, I feel like they'll come in handy when we're camping or going on road trips or something. I also like the steps that are in the back on the bumper. It's kind of just there to step on. I can't even talk right now. Just like my feelings, she just, <laughs> it's, it's just there to step it's on. It's there to step on. Seems like there's a really good amount of headroom in here too. Yeah, I feel like even when you're back there, you can reach up and it's pretty tall. Oh, and here, it opens both ways, which is cool. You know, there's a Q-tip in the back seat. <laughs> that's a good feature. Yeah, that's a good feature. Or would that be considered a quirk? I don't know. Depends how you look at it. <laughs> what is that? That's what? Is that a seatbelt? Yeah, it's that's the middle that's seat? the middle seatbelt, which okay. is kind of funky. But I tucked it into the top there. Oh. I'm kind of a pro at tucking. So a couple things we plan on doing to this. I think we're gonna do some uh, some of this gray trim buffing. Um, put some of that that polish on there. There's a couple paint rust spots, so I'm gonna try and figure out what to do with these. Someone tried to cover it up with a ill-matching paint code. Would love to get her some fog lights inserts here. Um, an LED bar would be awesome. But tires are definitely more important considering these are pretty freaking worn down and they're loud on the highway. We're looking at some 265-75 R16 Falcon Wild Peak AT3s. Oh, my tax return can pay for that. What? Really cool. You crazy. Did I even tell you that? I don't think nah. I did. You told me it was Hawks return. They don't tell me it was pay for him. Mm. Yeah. <sighs> this is Nissan's 4 liter V6. It was in a wide array of their utilitarian vehicles like the Frontier um, and the Pathfinder. From what I hear, it's supposed to be a pretty good engine. Um, I want to look into the downsides of it a little bit more. I was surprised with how unrefined it sounds though, especially when compared to the 4.7 V8 in the 4Runner and even the 4 liter in the 4Runner. So the dealer just did uh, a new exhaust manifold gasket, catalytic converter and O2 sensor, but the air conditioner is leaking. I tried recharging it and then it ended up just leaking out. I'm gonna try and JB weld it. If that doesn't work, we'll just have to replace the line. And the rear wiper is seized up, so I think we're gonna have to replace the motor in there. Shouldn't be too hard though. I don't know what happened, but there's a lot of these little rock chips on the driver's side. You can see them here. And I'll probably end up taking the run boards off and resurfacing them and actually putting them back on, unlike the 4Runner. I was never a huge fan of the way the X-Terrace look, but there's just something about this one that just looks rugged. The proportions are really cool. Uh, I like how they still had this vertical door handle here. So you didn't like the vertical door handle? Yeah, I just thought it looked weird. I know the, the Jeep Compass had it too or something, right? That's true, and that's not a good sign. It, it's Samantha thing, she eventually comes around to it. Um, the weird looking things in life, like me, and she eventually <laughs> learns to like it. 
Stop. I'm cute, but not according to the comments on that Vin Wiki video I just did. Does it sleep in not some handy car guy? We didn't test that, did we? Oh, oh my God, I don't know if we did test that. I might have to test that right now. We need to. So the rear seats are super easy to fold forward. And I like that these have a little detachable thing right here. Um, unlike in the Forerunner where you had to just unscrew these to take them out. You should just pop right out like that. The Forerunner does a lot of things better, but there's, I'm just trying to look at the, the positive stuff in the Xterra. Oops. Shaboom. Okay. Sure. I understand what Nissan was doing when they did like the plastic floors in here. I just don't like it. Because the entire way back from North Carolina, my suitcase was sliding <laughs> back and forward. Yeah, I feel like we need to get a carpet or something for back there. WeatherTech sponsor? Come on, WeatherTech, you know you want to. You know you want to. That'd be sick. Yeah, all right, so. Oh yeah, okay. We could make it work. Will it sleep in any car guy is a standard unit of measurement. I'm six feet tall and it's kind of like an overlanding test in a way to see if we can actually camp in the back of this or sleep if we need to in a pinch. So what we usually do is set up a twin air mattress here and it looks like it should fit beautifully in between the wheel wells. Yeah. Um, and if you ever get bored, you can just... <laughs> we under... Did I just break something? Did you just rip your pants? There was definitely a sound. That there just... was. All right, so how about some things that we're not crazy about with the Xterra? Uh, the plastic. The plastic. The interior is probably one of the cheapest interiors I've ever seen from a Japanese car. Also, we test drove another Xterra a few Pro months 4X. ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and everything, like this was leather. The seats were leather. Everything was plastic just like that. There were these floor mats in the front and they had polished them. So yeah. when we test drove it, uh, we were <laughs> just sliding around. Oh my gosh, we we could not like stay put. It was ridiculous. Surprise. And it was the most uncomfortable thing. But this is better. Um, I much prefer the cloth seats because it keeps you a little stable, especially when you're off-roading like that and jostling around because uh, the front seats are not supportive. They're, they're pretty bad. Um, they're a lot like the, the JK Wrangler in that regard. They're a little stiff, not too padded, and not very supportive. So that's another downside. I was hoping to have Bluetooth in my next car, but we're gonna have to wait. Uh, there's only two cup holders right in the middle here. Nothing, no storage on the sides. Yeah, that was weird. No storage at all. Uh, no back pockets to yeah. the front seats here. Um, oh, the windows only go down so oh, yeah. far. This, see this? This is as far as the rear windows go down because of the shape of the door. So that kind of stinks, but I mean, we're not going to have too many passengers in here. So uh, if we're only, if we're going to have a passenger, it's most likely going to be a dog. And this is probably a good thing for that. Yeah, you're right. Um, what? Well, I guess there's no cup holders in the back anymore. Wait, what? I don't know. How did that just happen? So follow along as we try and do some of these things and I'll keep you guys updated. All right, take care now. Bye bye then. Is that a cat? Savine, what's it in there? You're nice and warm. The cat is not coming with us. 